All right, by now, uh, everybody should know where their agent launch menu is. Uh, it is at agent.truepower.com. A couple things that I want to point out. Uh, you know, for the most part, this is where you can access just about everything uh, that you need to other than your email and the solar at the moment. Um, and if you, if you ever need any additional help uh, on the fly, uh, that's what this little blue button down here is for. Support can get on the line with you and help you. So be sure to take advantage of the live help button there in the left-hand corner. Uh, most everything is pretty straightforward if you haven't gone through it already. Uh, the top button it takes you to the corporate website at truepower.org. Uh, the two green buttons access the pricing platform. Uh, the top one is the front of the platform, which is customer facing or to the public. And then the back office is the back of the platform where we do all of our commercial deals. Uh, access to the where you submit your utility audits, uh, some additional information and resources that are available for you, not the general public. It's different than the, the uh, resources that you see from the website and obviously the button that you use to join the meeting today. And then you've got some extra uh, buttons down here that can help you with checking your speed to uh, using some of our customer appreciation uh, benefits and PDF tools and those things. So uh, let's jump over into the email. And so today we're going to be talking about the overview of the pricing platform, uh, the basics of residential pricing and the basics of commercial pricing. And then we're going to be entering in a commercial uh, customer as well. So uh, going over the pricing platform, uh, as we said before, the top button will take you to the front of the platform, which is what the public sees. And so this is where we enter. If you do any residential deals, you want to run the residential deals through the front of the platform. Uh, we separated them a couple years ago just so that people can't make mistakes. Uh, so it's a very simple process. The first thing you're going to want to do is put in your sales code, which is your username. It's your extension. Um, so if you put your uh, sales code in there, you'll see that this green bar will show up. That tells you that anything you do in the front of the platform is going to automatically put that in your pipeline and you'll see all of those deals in the back office, which you'll see in just a moment. So at this point, once you enter it, it should remember it um, unless you've stripped it out for some reason, it'll remember that, but just make sure that you applied the sales code. Otherwise uh, you're just entering a deal into the abyss and then we got to go look for it. So the process is very simple, 75075, putting in a zip code. The system will pull up the uh, utility and you click get rates. And from here, um, I would say in 99% of the time, you never need to change the past year's usage, uh, just whatever they're currently paying and then hit requote. And that's going to generate uh, another column here. If you don't, if you don't put in whatever they're paying currently, then this column column that you see for savings per month will not show up. So, pretty straightforward. Uh, obviously, uh, the best rate right now uh, is 5.2 with uh, Spark Energy. It's a six month term. That's probably not something that I want. I want at least on a residential deal. If they're a renter, I probably want at least a, a 12 month contract. If they are a homeowner, maybe a 36 month contract. So either one of these are gonna have at least 80 to $90 worth of savings. Once you select that plan while you're on the phone with the customer, uh, you simply enter in their name address, phone number, and, and uh, email address. If they don't have a landline, just put in the mobile number in both locations. 
putting in their email address and then whether they are a house or an apartment. Once you click next and move to the next screen, it is just going to verify all of the information that you entered is correct. Uh, and then you can move forward and then submit and then you're done. At this point, the system is going to recognize that your IP address does not belong to the address that you entered. So it is going to send an email to the customer with a link that they need to click in order to make this order active. Uh, that's our verification process. So I usually let them know that our system sent them a verification link. If they'll open up that uh, email, click that link and read back the response for my records, that just tells you they did it. So once they click that, it's gonna say, thank you very much for uh, uh, subscribing with whichever plan you chose. Uh, at a rate of X for a duration of X. And so you're gonna know automatically if they've done that. So residential deals are pretty simple, pretty straightforward, not real complicated. You don't need a copy of their bill as long as they're uh, giving you the information as it's read on the bill. So even usually when I'm uh, entering in their information, I will always ask them, how is your name spelled on the bill? How is your address on the bill? Uh, because even if it's misspelled, you wanna put all of that information exactly the way it is on the bill, so. All right, so let's go on to the next step. And that is looking at the back of the pricing platform. And so from here, um, you will enter in your username, which is the same as your extension. All right, there we go. So um, once you log in to your back office, there's some things I'm going to point out to you uh, that are going to be here. If you have any tasks that are due, like renewals or anything like that that comes up, you'll get a notification in the task. So the system will remind you of any customers that need their renewals. Anytime you do a residential or commercial deal, well, the commercial deals are entered through the back of the platform. Uh, all residential deals are done through the front. But once you put in that sales code, it is going to uh, bring the residential deal. And so you'll see it right here. So you'll see that we have, you know, our internal contract number. That's not the contract with the customer. That's just internal so that we can track it. Uh, the customer's name, the status of it, state, uh, and some general information. And you can uh, change the layout of the way this looks. Uh, you can move these columns except for this, the first three items here. Uh, all of this is editable in how you want it to look. Uh, and so you can set up different ways that you want your platform to look. So you can kind of play with that a little bit. Um, the market updates is done on a daily basis. So when you look at the market updates, it's going to let you know where the market is going to be most favorable for the customers and where you're going to see uh, rates that are lower than the utility rates uh, in different areas. And so you'll see that these notices come in every day uh, for different areas. So you're going to have both your electric and natural gas uh, for both residential and commercial, matrix pricing, custom pricing, so on and so forth. So uh, you want to make sure that you uh, check on that and that is done right over here under market updates. Uh, up here at the top, you've got a place where you can go to uh, and check on reports. Uh, and then your menu here, uh, you've got some news and resources reports, market uh, overview, uh, which is going to give you a, a map of the United States and all of the states that are deregulated 
And when you click on a state, it'll show you which suppliers are active in that state at the moment. Um, market data analytics. Um, if you're wanting to do any kind of market data analytics for either uh, electric or natural gas, you can do that from here. All you need to do is select the state that you want to do uh, the analytics in, select the utility that is for that particular area, select a date range. Uh, so, you know, you can have, um, you know, you can go back a couple years, go forward a year and get statistics. And this is going to show you what the market historically has done for the past year. And then what does it look like moving forward? So, uh, for the most part, we are right in here. So uh, the market is pretty decent. So you got a sum of 252. Doesn't look like there's, except for um, in April, we're going to have a little bit of a, of a down tick in the market. And then for the rest of the year, for the most part, it looks like whatever rates we have right now, uh, to the end of the month, they're probably going to be more favorable than what you're going to see over the next uh, 12 to 24 months. So obviously now would be a good time to renew those contracts, especially if their contract expires in July or, or next January. So want to take advantage of those market uh, analytics. And so um, that is available right over here on market analytics. And of course, uh, you can take the tour of the home page, which will just walk you through section by section, uh, letting you know where where things are. So pretty straightforward. So let's get to uh, some of the pricing abilities. And so right here, uh, you have the instant quote and you add a new customer. The difference between these two is the instant quote is going to give you pricing before you enter customer information. And if you, but if you have the customer's electric bill, um, then you're much better off to enter all of that information in first. For the exercise, let's go in here and look at how to enter a deal. So let's just put in a Chicago zip code, which, um, and then of course you can enter their annual KWH and then if you look down here, you're not going to see any savings because we have not entered in whatever they're paying currently. So if we put in an, a, a number of what they're currently paying and update the system, then it is going to create a savings column that will uh, let you know what the total savings is for that particular uh, situation with that much KWH uh, annual usage um, for that area uh, and based on your mills. So you're going to put in the zip code, uh, the expiration date of the customer, their total KWH annually, and then your mills is what's going to set uh, the commission. And so you can raise and lower the commission uh, by lowering and raising the mills. From here, you can see that the utility is here and what they're currently paying. So when you come down, you will always see uh, three at the top here, which is best available plan starting February. You're typically going to see 12, 24, 36 months. Uh, and then all of the other plans are going to be listed below. So couple other things that I want to point out is the uh, this little detail bar that will give you kind of an idea as to where we are in the marketplace. What this is doing is actually looking at all of the data analytics uh, going back two years and looking ahead a year and basically saying is the prices that we're looking at today, the best rates that you're gonna have between now uh, and a year. 
Well, we already know by looking at the analytics earlier, there was a, a time period in April where the the market was slightly a little bit better, but it was really pretty close. Uh, so this system is actually taking that into account, which uh, if that if those prices were higher in April, you would see this slider would have been way down here in the green because it would show that the rates that we have today are far better than anything that you can produce in a year from now. So even though there is one opportunity between now and the end of the year in April where the market is going to be pretty close to where we are right now. So you're going to see that uh, this slider is going to be slightly up. So that's why I always tell people if you see this in the lower third or, or, or further into the green, much better situation. If we were way over here in the red, then I would want to definitely look at my analytics and find out when I can provide this customer a much better opportunity, if available, if timing is available. So there's a lot of uh, variables there in talking to that customer and doing what's going to be best for them. From here, you have um, a couple of other buttons. One is a rate calendar, which is basically going to uh, take you through the different uh, contract months as well as you can move forward. So if we go over here to April, we can see that the rates are going to be a little more favorable moving forward. There you go. So, um, this is just kind of a quick glance uh, rate calendar. And then here is a link to email the customer, whatever you see. Now, when you click email, you're going to put in their name, their email and some sort of note. Uh, when they get this email, they're not going to see the top three here. They are going to see everything from here down. They're going to see the supplier, uh, the rate, the term, the savings. They are not going to see the estimated commission. Um, and they are not going to see the sign up button. So they're just going to see this area right here. Um, and so, and it's going to be a snapshot of what you see today. So if they look at it tomorrow, it's not going to change. It's just going to be a snapshot of what we were looking at today. So that's your really your call to action. So whatever you see on this screen is what they're going to see. So if for some reason, uh, you don't want them to see all of this. And let's say you only want them to see long term contracts. Well, let's start by sorting this based on savings. And let's go over here and filter out uh, all of the uh, terms. Put that to, oops. Well, There we go. All right. All right. So from here, you can filter out um, those things that you don't want included. So if you don't want to see any of those short term contracts, uh, you can filter out. So here's what they're going to see is all 36 and 48 month term contracts. So when you send this email, uh, they're only going to see what's on that screen. So make sure that you've, you know, sorted this out the way you want it to look. 
before you send the email. Now, if you're talking to the customer and you're on the line with them and you say, look, uh, looks like we can lower your rate uh, to 6.6 .6 and I can protect that uh, savings for the next 36 months, uh, it'll save you approximately $2,400, which is pretty significant and click sign up, then you're going to go through here. And uh, if they're already a customer in the platform, then you can select yes, and then you have to go uh, pull the data from it. But if they're not, then it is going to ask you to put in their particular information, just like you would in the beginning for uh, if you were going to put them in straight away. So either way you can do um, you can enter that information. It's much easier to have control over it in the dashboard. If you enter the customer's information first, why? Well, first off, you're not going to have to be on the phone with the customer so you can take your time. And so when you get a copy of that customer's utility bill um, and it is in a PDF format, just like this one is here, that we're going to use for today's uh, training. Uh, one of the things that I like to do is to open up a notepad and then uh, it makes it very easy because you can see things on the bill and you can kind of move this aside and uh, makes it easier to type to transcribe things. Um, and it makes it easier to copy and paste when you get ready to put that information into the system. So any questions to where we are as far as the instant quote before we move on to entering a customer? Yes, um, I noticed there's two ways to sign people up. You, I mean, emailing them the link, which allows them to do it themselves, or you click the sign up button and do it for them. Which do you prefer most and why? I prefer to click it myself because then I know it's done. <laughs> Okay. Pretty, pretty simple. Uh, you know, sometimes you send something to somebody and they're, they, they don't know, or they see something or I, I just, I would much rather, you know, click it myself and, and make it a lot easier. So let's just assume here just for a second that you got this bill from a customer. Well, the first thing we would want to do is upload it to the auditors. And then I'm going to jump in my back office uh, and enter the customer's information in here so that I can analyze it and see what kind of additional savings I can provide that customer. And so uh, once you click add new customer, we have now upgraded or updated the platform. So it looks a little bit different than what you may have seen before. But I think this is going to make things really easy. And so um, if we put in their zip code and we know basically how much their usage is, um, you can take that information and hit continue. There we go. All right. Is this uh, a current customer? If you said yes, then it would want you to start putting some information in there. And once you start typing, it'll, it'll actually pull that information from the system. But this is not a new customer. And so we're going to take the legal name of the customer, which I took off of the bill even though I know it's, it's a production corporation or something like that. Um, I am going to just take and copy this information in here. Let me get that back over here. And drop that in, drop that in. And if some of this is not right, John, we can update it later. And we're going to put in the zip code. So it's going to pull up the city and state. We've got the address, uh, which is the main billing address. 
and if if the customer had a different billing address you know like a p.o box or something like that you could always put that in there and then we're going to want to put in their phone number and email so start with the main contact number we're going to put in the oops email address and phone number and fax and hit next and so the system is going to look for that verification to say is that correct because i put i spelled out avenue instead of abbreviating it i didn't put in the uh plus four on it so we want to go with the system and so it's going to update that information. So once we've entered that, now we're going to enter in the billing information as far as their KWH. The system has changed a little bit. So uh, if you happen to have a spreadsheet um, with all of the information, you can up all of it and upload it all in one stroke. If you want, you can certainly uh, go in and download the template just so you can kind of get a good idea of how that Excel spreadsheet works. Uh, but if you've got, you know, just a handful of bills, uh, much easier to put them in by hand than to go through this process. But if you've got like an oil and gas company that has, you know, uh, 500 pump jacks out there and each one of them has their own meter, uh, they're more than likely going to send you all of that information on a spreadsheet anyway. So right here, we're going to go ahead and put in the uh, first account information, uh, which is 3965, 3965, and the account number, and the KWH. And we're going to attach a copy of the bill. Uh, let's see here. There we go. And then we're going to add another location. This is going to be um, pretty much the same here. So let me pull this. Here we go. So the next one is 3932. Three nine three two, and the account number, the annual usage, and we're going to attach the bill for the second one. We're going to add the third location. We're going to copy the information from account one, and it is 3981. 3981, and the account number. And each bill has all of this information on it. And the usage, and I think that, okay, yep. And Let's attach the bill for that one. That's number three. And the last one we're going to enter in is, um, is 3973. 3973. And unit B on this one and the account number 
the usage, 139,000. And attach a copy of the bill. Quick question, did you ballpark that annual usage by looking at the bill or did you pull that up somewhere? I ballparked it. Okay. All right, so we're going to enter that in there and 3932, that's good. Uh, that one's good and that's good. So now we can hit submit. It's going to take and, and look at all of the information so you can review it, and make sure that everything is is good to go. Um, let's see here. Yeah, everything looks good. And this is going to be a switch. It's not a move in. So it's not a new account and hit submit. So once you've entered all of the customer information in there, it's going to pull you up to this screen, which is going to have the customer information, a little bit about their electric. Um, and you can see that now it has added up the KWH. And so this will actually get updated uh, when, uh, and it could take a couple hours uh, for all of this information to start getting updated in the platform. So it's going to start updating here pretty doggone quick. So you can see that it's already starting to fill in, even though I didn't have the information. Uh, the platform is already starting to pull in the usage for each one of those accounts going back months and being able to look at, you know, the monthly overpay, what things are going on. And so pretty nice. It's already already happening on the fly. Wow. So that's pretty I see quick. the annual consumption also went up. Yeah. So isn't that wonderful? Because now you make more money. So, uh, so from here, now that you know that everything is in here, um, now it's time to price. Now we've got some buttons right here that are available to us. And so talking about this first one, which is generate an LOA, uh, which is a letter of authorization, which is required to request, request historical usage from the utility, which will enable the suppliers to bid on your account at the auction. Uh, we already have all of their data, so not really uh, that big of a deal. LOAs are certainly more important in um, Texas than they are in, in other states. Uh, at the end of an auction, if for some reason a, a supplier wants that verification, they may request uh, a copy of the LOA and then you would just come over here and click the button. It's going to send an email to the customer, uh, like a DocuSign, they'll open it up, type in their name and hit enter, it comes back and it'll attach itself right over here, back to the platform where it came from under attachments and you'll see the LOA uh, when it returns. So. Uh, that's where you would find it. So if you're looking for it, uh, the LOE is a letter of exclusivity. So what does that do? Well, we know that the customer is uh, with a particular supplier. And if we want to do an auction for this customer um, and we want to include that particular supplier, then we need to have a, an LOE signed by the customer. If you don't have the LOE and you're going to do an auction, make sure that you deselect that and we'll go in more detail in just a moment. Um, so either have the LOE or deselect them in an auction because otherwise if you don't have the LOE and you do an auction and you're basically notifying their current supplier that they're looking for bids elsewhere. They're going to send that customer to retention and try and talk them into doing business with them uh, and not you. And so you will screw yourself out of a deal. So don't want to do that. So either have the LOE 
or exclude them from the auction. Just remember that. Uh, this next button is to view today's rates, which we're going to do in a moment. And then here is request price. That is how you do the auction. And we'll do that in a moment. And then if we were going to, if we were all completely done with this customer, signed, sealed, and delivered, and then we wanted to add natural gas, uh, then you would just add this, click this button, uh, select natural gas to the deal and it will pull most of the data for those addresses and stuff. So it'll auto populate a lot of that stuff. So it takes, it makes the, the process for adding natural gas to, um, to the account much easier uh, than having to go through it from scratch like we did just a moment ago. So let's go ahead and jump in here and look at uh, today's rates. So I know that uh, based on the, the averages that this particular customer, and so you can see that one of the new functionalities that we've added to the platform is uh, a new advice box. So this one says that the load factor of the contract is 47.85. We recommend matrix pricing, you know, please choose uh, the offers that are acceptable. Uh, that doesn't mean that you can't do um, a uh, utility auction, um, but matrix pricing is pretty favorable right now. So you've got that going for us. So let's come down here. We can see we've got 690,000 KWH. You only need 300 KW, 300,000 KWH to do an auction. We've got the mills set to five. Uh, you can change that, John, later if you want. Um, and let's take a look at where we are. Of course, we already know that the market is uh, got one other slight opportunity in April to get some better rates. But if you come down here, you're going to get the top three. And then you're going to see uh, pricing down here below. And you're going to notice that uh, all of these rates are in green based on this customer's um, uh, load factor. Load factor. Thanks, John. Uh, so based on this customer's load factor, uh, the system is going to display green. If their load factor was different, um, then it may show uh, an orange, which is going to be right on the cusp. Or if you see any pricing that's in red, then avoid it because it'll just get kicked by the supplier. So that was one of the new functionalities that we've added to the platform is having these prices uh, and rates change color so that you know that the load factor matches that supplier's requirements. So if we come up here, whoop, if we come up here uh, and add what the average rate is, and this customer has actually got a fairly decent base rate, but their average rate is actually 13 why is that jumping? 13.3. So now if I click search and update, now it's going to add in this savings column. So it's taking all of those accounts, combining it, and letting me know that there are some significant savings there. So if I sort this by savings, it's going to put all of the largest savings at the top. I can certainly filter this out so that we're not looking at anything except deals that are 36 months or greater. Um, that's obviously a pretty significant savings there, $154,000. Um, and the commission is $6,900. So uh, that is based on the mills that is set in here. So now that this, we're looking at how many contracts here? We're looking at seven total. So if I email the plans to the customer, um, 
then it's automatically going to have all of their information. So again, this is only going to take a snapshot of what you see down here. And the way it's going to do that is, um, what the customer will see is just this right here. So they will see nothing, nothing else. <coughs> Excuse me. They will not see the commission. Uh, they will not uh, see any sign up buttons. If for some reason you need to, you know, you know that the customer is not going to be able to get back with you for another week or two, but you want to put something in their hand so that they can get excited about it, then uh, you've got this email a link to the customer, which is going to ask you to confirm the mills. So once you do this, you got to stick consistent. So once you set the mills, whatever that's going to be, and you hit send, it is going to send a special link to the customer that when they open it, it's going to pull up a special page that looks just like this. It's going to have the suppliers, the rate, the terms, the savings. It will not have, it will not show the commission, but it will show the sign up button. So, you know, they're not going to be able to get back to you for whatever reason for uh, another week or two because they're out of town or in the middle of an audit or they're buying a home or some reason that they're just too busy to deal with it at this moment. I want to put something in their hands because you know as well as I do, uh, him or her is going to look at their email when they're in bed and they're going to click on that link and they're going to see this, oh my God, I can save $154,000. I better take advantage of this right now. And when they click the sign up button, it is the all of the information is already in the platform. And so it's going to automatically pull the, the contract for this supplier for that state, fill it out for them and send it to them in a form of an electronic signature request. So they'll open it up just like a DocuSign. They'll type in their name, hit enter. It comes back and attaches itself right back to the account that it came from. And you'll see it over here. And in the front of the platform, you will see the uh, platform change. There's this customer. And so this will go from request price to signed and it will send you a notification. So if they can't get to you right away, I would definitely send them a link. Now the unique thing about the link is, let's say he opens it and sees $154,000, uh, 154,100 uh, and doesn't do anything. But the next day he's like, let me look at that again. And then he looks at it and it says 153,800. He's like, wow, it's gone down. I better take advantage of this before it gets any lower. Um, on the, When it says, uh, like for instance, on the 48 month, 154,100 savings, that's on the duration of the, of the four years, correct? Correct. Or is that per? Yeah, that's, that's, okay. that's, uh, that's total savings on the account. Okay, over four years. Now the commission, is that a yearly or is that the entire commission of the four years? That's the entire commission. Okay. So is that is that paid out 6905? Uh, is the commission's paid out up front or is that on a yearly? No. Your commission, how much does this customer use? Let me get my six hundred and ninety thousand KWA. So six ninety okay five hundred times point zero zero five. Okay. The upfront commission would be uh thirty four hundred dollars. Okay, I got you. Does that make sense? Yes, it sure does. Okay. So um like unlike the the front of the platform on the residential it always shows savings based on monthly 
on the front of the platform, all savings is shown by monthly. In the back of the platform, we're showing total. Um, and obviously, um, you know, if you took 154,000 and divided it by 48, that's still, you know, $3,200. But uh, if you were looking at $3,200 in that column, would that excite you as much as 154? Probably not. No. So 154 is, you know, a little that's, more exciting. Yeah, that, that, yes, it's it much is. easier to sell a bigger number than a little number, right? Of course. <laughs> there you go. So um, obviously I would want them to take advantage of it. Now the rate is obviously a little bit higher. Uh, technically, I mean, this is going to be, I mean, we've got this sorted based on savings. And so the total savings, because the contract length is longer, is higher, but this is going to be actually a much more favorable deal, right? Even though the commission's a little bit less, but it's only a three-year contract, but the rate's at 6.6 .6 versus 7.7. Mm -hmm. .7. So just depending on what I'm dealing with that customer, uh, and you know, I may want to, you know, talk to them. It's like, look, I pulled this up. I looked at the analytics. Time is running out on us. And I don't know how much longer I can hold this. But right now I've got basically about $154,000 worth of additional savings. And I can protect that uh, by lowering the rate to 7.7. Uh, for the next 48 months. Do you want me to move forward now? Yay or nay. So that's that's kind of a call. If I'm going to email them a proposal, I probably am not going to include this one. We can, but I probably am not because these are more going to be more favorable, right? I might include this one, this one, and this one, and we'll do that in just a moment. So, uh, but you can certainly filter this out. So whenever you send, whether you send the link or whether you send uh, the uh, email, whether you send the plans or whether you send the link, the link is live. So if they open it today, it's going to automatically update based on whatever the market is at that moment. So if they open it every day for 365 days, every day it's going to change slightly based on whatever the market is at that moment. The uh, email, the plans to the customer is just a snapshot of what you see. So if I didn't want this customer to see that 48, I could certainly take it out of there. And so now we're only looking at 36. And if I wanted to, you know, reduce this down, I could certainly do that even further. Maybe uh, if I wanted to take AP out, um, oops. So now I've got this narrowed down to uh, three suppliers, three different suppliers, which is what I typically like to do when I'm going to generate a proposal, which you see right here. Why? Well, statistics show that if you send the customer a proposal with one supplier, then you've got about a, an average of 10% chance of closing that deal without a follow-up phone call. Now, obviously you would follow up, but when you put three different suppliers on the same proposal, that number jumps from 10% to 70% without a follow-up phone call. Should we add three? Your call. Uh, I would. So, and I don't really want to put 5, 10, 15 on there because then it just really starts to become overwhelming. Uh, when you only put one supplier, the usually the answer is yes or no. If you put three suppliers on the proposal, then usually the answer is which one, right? So uh, narrow it down to the best three that you want to include on a proposal. Um, I usually like to take and, and name it after 
the company name. So let's go up here and show you how this proposal system works. So we're going to generate a proposal. There we go. All right. So now we've got our suppliers in there. I'm going to take the top three to include in the proposal. Click Next. And I'm going to include a chart in here. So we're going to go ahead and include that. And you can include a chart that goes back uh, from one to five years. Uh, one year is, is sufficient. Um, their peak demand is on there and all of their usage generate the proposal. So you can see that the platform, the system is already pulling in their usage um, from all of those accounts and averaging that together. So you can see right here that the proposal is available. So let's open it when it's done downloading. And there we go. So it's got uh, the agent's name on here and here, the company, who this is going to, and their, their total annual usage, along with the three different suppliers uh, that we're including in this. And um, it looks like AEP has the best rates at 6.6, .6, but it shows an, an annual savings of 46,000, which is about a 50% savings. And the total term is going to save them about $138,000. Down below, it is actually going to break out uh, the total amount of savings, but um, and then, of course, you've got the, the graph. So obviously, you can see that where we are here today is lower than the rest of the year. So this is the proposal that I would send to somebody. So if I were going to save this, I would download it and then save it um, as the company name and then send it to the customer. Um, if you if you follow the the basic process in other words when we make first contact with a customer we're making contact under the premise of the utility audit so once i get a copy of their utility bill i'm going to upload it to the auditors by going back here to my my launch menu click submit and fill out the information upload the bill to the auditors so they can get underway and then i'm going to jump in my back office enter all of the information from the bill into the system so that I can see what kind of additional savings I can provide this customer um, and then create that uh, comprehensive report and save it as a PDF and email it to the cust customer and then I'm going to immediately follow up. Now really it should only take you you know 20 minutes to put all of this information in it or if you're not talking somebody through it, but enter all of that information, create the report uh, and email that to the customer. Don't send it to them as the default that says proposal, S download it and rename it uh, whatever the company name is so that when you're attaching it, they're not seeing proposal one, two, three or anything like that, but they're seeing an attachment that's their company name. They're much easier to open that than something that looks like you're trying to sell them something. So email that to the customer along with the note that says, give me a call when you get this. Then I'm going to immediately follow up with a phone call uh, with that customer. Let them know that I got their utility bill safe and sound. The auditors are already underway. In fact, in the initial investigation, we also uncovered some additional savings in your electricity account. I emailed you some information. When you have a chance, take a look at that. Give me a call and I'll go over the details. Pretty simple, straightforward. Um, obviously, they see, you know, a significant amount of savings, 130, whatever it was, $137,000.
uh, I think they're going to be calling you wanting to know how do we implement this savings? Well, the how is not so important as much as when do you want it to start? Well, I'd like it to start right now. So you go over here and you click sign up and the system will pull the contract for this supplier for that state, fill it out for you so there's no human error and send it to the customer for an electronic signature. They'll open it up, type in their name, hit enter, it comes back and attaches itself right back to the account that it came from. Um, and um, you'll find the attachment down here and on the platform, this will go from requested price to signed and send you an email notification letting you know that uh, you now have a commissionable event. Let's go back over here to uh, this customer. And so we looked at, you know, today's rates. So, but let's take a look at it and say, okay, what if this customer um, uh, qualify for an auction, which it does. Then you would go over here to where it says request price. By default, you will see that the system provides three bids uh, and counter bids. And so, and then you set your mills to whatever it is that you want it to be. So if you're gonna leave it at five mills uh, and it's going to automatically set the auction for three days, you can make it longer not really generally needed because most of the action happens uh, at the end of the auction versus at the beginning of the auction, but it provides three days. So you've got one, two, one, two, three. Um, you know, if it was a holiday or something in there that you wanted to add an extra day, you could certainly do that. Um, and what time do you want that auction to stop? One o'clock is optimal. From here, we're going to select fixed all in. What kind of contracts would you like to see? Well, looking at the matrix pricing as we did earlier, we know that 36 is pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna put in 60 months. Uh, I think I'm gonna also want to look at 48. And maybe 36. So that's about as small as I want to get. So we'll leave that there. And again, uh, as I said earlier, if you have a supplier that's in this list and you don't have the LOE, then unselect them. So let's say if this guy was with Hudson and I don't have the LOE, then I better deselect Hudson because the last thing I want to do is tell Hudson, we're getting ready to shop your client and you know they're going to take the customer take them to retention and try and do a deal behind your back if you have the loe they can participate in the auction and you are protected so they can't send them to um, retention that makes sense i want to make sure that that's clear because i don't want somebody to mess that up all right special instructions anything that you need to add in there one of the things that I like to add is to please include any uh, sweet spot deals. What does that mean? Well, anything that is, you know, based on this instructions, these suppliers are only gonna give you rates based on 60, 48 and 36 months. But if they've got a contract that is 46 or 47 months, it's real close, but the rate is much better, then I wanna see that too. So those are typically called sweet spot deals that are outside of the normal, typical term period, 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, so on and so forth. So um, please include any sweet spot deals. And then if I click this button, I don't know if you can see it on your screen, it says invite customer. When we submit this, um, this is going to uh, also send a link 
to the customer so that they can actually watch the auction process live. It is going to be three days long, so um, they're going to be bored for a while, but they can periodically peer in. And so that gives you that transparency so that they know that um, what they're seeing is what the what the suppliers are bidding. We're not cooking the books and, you know, the supplier said we'll do it for three cents and then we get back with the customer and say, well, you know, we were able to lower it down to four cents and doing all of that. So I like to include the customer in that process so that they see everything that's going on. I think it's good for business. It's good transparency. So uh, if you want to include the customer, uh, click this button and then create session. Now, once this goes uh, starts, you will not be able to do anything with this customer until the completion of that auction. Um, and then at the completion of the auction, then when you get the results, you'll be able to talk to the customer about it and uh, go over the results and pick the one that you like the best. But anyway, so uh, I'm going to wrap up today um, and hopefully this was helpful in how to add a commercial customer into the platform, how to look at pricing and how to uh, send those different links and to either a proposal, send a link uh, that automatically updates or to send a, a link which is a snapshot of everything that's going on with that or whatever the pricing is at that moment. So I appreciate uh, the time that we had today together to kind of cover some of those uh, areas on the commercial uh, entering of information from the bill and creating a comprehensive report for a proposal to send to the customer. Have a wonderful day and we will talk to you soon.